Hopefully I don't mess this one up again by saying the wrong statistics, but here we go. Ha! Ah, welcome back to Motion Board Shop, everybody. My name is Nathan Blackburn, and today I'm going to talk to you about the least expensive snowboard that Ride makes, the Ride Agenda. This is a board that I have personally been riding since last year, and it is not underwhelming for the price. This is a $429 beginner-friendly board that is decent enough to take a thrashing. Um, I've been riding this, one of our team riders, Brett, has been riding this as well, and Brett is going to be kind of clipped in on the side over here just showing you all the types of tricks and things that he's been doing as far as rails. But here's some of the stuff that you want to know about the ride agenda that make it cool. First off, camber dominant mid-body, so camber in the board, just past the inserts, and then a little bit of rocker in the nose and tail. This is a true twin board, meaning that the shape is symmetrical, the camber profile is symmetrical as well, and this stance pattern is mounted in the center, so it's not set back either. This board does feature that twin standard camber. It also has impact plates underneath each foot, which is essentially just another piece of fiberglass armor to reinforce where your bindings go so you don't have to worry about um, stress fractures or damage from hard landings, big drops, or great rail tricks. Um, speaking of rail tricks, this board does have a urethane sidewall, so if you are going to try and beat it up, the urethane sidewall is going to add a level of durability, impact resistance, as well as it makes the board feel a little bit more damp when carving around. After that, let's get to the bottom. This board features an extruded stone ground base. Extruded bases are very durable. They do not absorb wax as well as a centered base, but if you are buying a $429 board, you're probably not waxing your board that often anyway, so who cares? The extruded base is going to be much more durable, it's not going to need as much wax, and with the stone ground surface on the bottom of it, it'll still have a decent amount of glide, but it will resist rock hits, impacts a little bit better because of that extruded um, composition. This board is intended for like a beginner intermediate style of riding. It's very forgiving. A lot of the flex for this board is kind of spread throughout the whole deck. So when you do get into it, you'll notice that it's pretty darn soft, but it doesn't have a full range of flex. So it won't bend as deeply as some of the more expensive boards. But if you're a beginning rider, it's just important to be able to get a little bit of flex and not have something so flexible that you loop out on it. Um, why that makes it a pretty sweet park board as well is because with the camber dominant midbody and the slightly, uh, the board's stiffer between the feet than it is in the nose and tail. So with the rocker zone in the nose and the rocker zone in the tail and a slightly more playful flex, it makes the board easier to pivot, twist, rotate, and sort of shuffle out of weird um, positions. Brett will show you a lot of these in this video, kind of in the side as we're talking about it. But what also makes it a great beginner board can be really beneficial in the park. It's easier to land tricks sideways, you can spin out of stuff a little easier, it's easier to release off the edges, and it does add with that camber dominant body a lot of pop, which is nice for a board that's not super expensive, and it's going to allow you to ride in such a way that it doesn't hold you back. It's not like you're buying a $430 board and now you can't hit jumps. This is a board that you can still hit jumps, still hit rails, still carve around. Having Ridden this board, I would say here are some of the shortcomings. A foot of pow, not really meant for it being a true twin. Um, going really, really fast. It'll go fast. I've gone probably 50 miles an hour on this board, but it's not meant to do that. It's meant to be fun and playful, doing side hits, hitting 180s, ride and switch. It's what this board's all about. If you want to really progress your skills, something like an agenda is awesome. You don't need a super high quality board to go clank steel in the park. You just want something that's good enough to be able to hit some steel and not blow up. And I would say that the ride agenda is that board. And if you're a completely new rider, this is a board that you can grow with as well. So even if you don't have the skills to necessarily justify a high-end board, you can get a board like this and grow with it. And even if you end up as good at snowboarding as Brett, you'll still be able to have fun on an agenda. And it's something that can always be a part of your quiver. If you've got any questions on the ride agenda or on why I'm still bald, please leave them in the comment box below. I'm always happy to see those. And thank you so much for tuning in for our review on the ride agenda. This is Nate Blackburn signing off, reminding you to always ride safe and wear a helmet. And tell me my cats are cute on Instagram. That's actually the most important part to me.